Hi, I'm Peter Luxdale and I farm here at Castle Hill Farm in Chanada, Aberystwyth. I'm the eighth generation of the family to take over and, and run the farm now, um, which is part of uh, a wider estate um, that dates back to the seven, uh, late 1700s. So we're currently farming in hand over three different farms, three different units. Uh, where we are, where I'm standing now is currently the home unit. Um, and we're just we're predominantly beef and sheep. We're organic and we've been organic since 2008. So that was back when my uncle was farming and that was his decision to come into organic. So over the last few years, there's been a lot of changes around the place here. We've adapted rotational grazing and uh, use adaptive grazing as well now. So using high stock densities, regular movements, uh, intensive grazing, but giving long rest periods and we've seen a massive difference in our in our grass growth, consumer organic, we don't put any fertilizer back on the ground. And we haven't done as much as we'd like to, but we think that's improved our soil health as well. So here we go, Lee. This is we've shown you this baby before. Yeah. This is our muck store that we put in last year. We constructed it last year, um, and we did this with the help of a grant. And essentially, what we realised as an organic farm is that we weren't uh, using our farmyard manure properly, mm. and that's a pretty key component of it. So our muck used to go out onto field uh, tips. Um, and of course it got rained on and a lot of the goodness leached out of it. Um, and even when we left it for a couple of years, it probably wasn't all that well mm. composted. Um, so we just decided we wanted to try and do something better with it. Um, motivated in part by the cost of straw and um, yeah. realizing that a lot of the straw isn't down for long and then it just gets, just could get wasted. But of course, if we can retain that straw and compost it properly and put it out, uh, then that's all additional organic matter going back on our fields. Well, we're really still in the first year of doing it, but what we found was that if we, if we turned it, certainly every fortnight, within about 12 weeks, it had composted enough to put it in, in, in the muck spreader mm. and, and put it out on the fields. Yeah. And most of that was then coming out as, you know, it wasn't coming out as big clumps. I mean, you walk the field afterwards, there'd be the occasional clump, which you'd sort of give a, give a kick to to break it up. Going around measuring the grass every week, you could keep an eye on how quickly both the this year's um, dung mm -hmm. and and the muck we were putting down disappeared, and it's remarkable yeah. how quickly it went. To my simple mind, that must mean that um, it's a reasonably good product, but also that the soil must be reasonably healthy, because that muck isn't just vanishing; something's coming up from below mm -hmm. and taking that muck yeah, and taking exactly. it down. Um, so, so when I walk around, if I'm walking around the fields, I'm really interested in how quickly the dung disappears, how quickly the distributed muck disappears, because I feel that's probably um, a useful practical measure of how healthy mm. the soil is. Uh, these years, 316 yearlings, they just came here this morning, up in that bank for two days and they'll work down then and probably have two days here and two days here and move around that way. So um, it's not the best quality grass, but this time of year, their maintenance requirements are relatively low. So as long as they've got enough forage to keep them, keep them moving on and keep them happy, um, we, fi we find it works better than doing forage crops and all that. So less mess, a lot easier, a lot less stress, the sheep come in cleaner and they, they seem to perform just as well. So there's a fence already up there, that went out this morning. Yep. Um, and, and then, like I say, tomorrow, when they finish that graze, they'll come round the fence at the back here, go into this field. There's a water trough up there. Yep. I'll just lift that fence to go the other side of the water trough, okay. and then they haven't got to go back there, so that's it recover. So the, the point is they graze it really intensely for short interval, and then they're off it then. I wouldn't do it to this intensity if, we, if, we, if it wasn't this simple. Exactly. Um, we do run systems where, for example, you can't see, but in the field behind us, there's an electric fence that splits that field in half, that stays up all year, that's a um, more permanent electric fence. And then I will go with this system and put fences up across there then, depending on how many animals we have, how long we want them to graze. Um, we find that the more often they move, the fresher grass, the better quality grass they get more regularly. So that you could give them this whole area and say, well, they're gonna have six days 
At the moment they're going to have six days over it in three different sections or you could give them six days of the whole area but the problem is in the first two days they'd have eaten all the best quality yeah. stuff and then they spend four days just picking through the rest mm -hmm. and they walk from one end back to the other that's when when it's wet that's when you get, make a mess but this way all they do is they they graze the best and then within two days they're onto the next stuff and they don't have a choice then so on that second day they have to pick through the rest mm -hmm. and then move on mm -hmm. but it means they get better quality grass every more regularly yeah. Two hundred and twenty meter fence line. Uh, it's taken me five minutes to put that out. Well, that's that's not long. That's not a long time in your day, and actually it gets you outside. As I quite enjoy doing it. So, so the pump from yeah. the pond yeah. that then pumps the water to that trough, yeah. and then the rest of the troughs on this block of ground are serviced by gravity. Yes. And then this one. So this is like the electric fencing stuff, the Kiwi Tech yeah. um, stuff. This is a their water system, so a Kiwi Tech water hydrant, and so that's just a te standard T piece. Works with 25 mil pipe, and it's a quick release valve. So you push the pipe mm -hmm. in, pull back, and then water flows through here. I do need to rethink it because um, at the moment I'm dragging the of pipe around. Really, what I want to do is have the pipe to the field and left there, yeah. and then when I go along, just take the trough and tug it in. But you'll yeah. see up here these Kiwi Tech um, drag troughs. It's a big round trough, you can drag it behind the quad bike. Very, they're very tough and hard wearing. But you can have them up to an 8% incline and they won't overflow. So you can see what we've got there. The beauty of these is you end this possibility. You can do everything you want with it. So, so, okay, they're more expensive than a standard water trough. But if it means I can serve 10 different paddocks with yeah. one, well, that makes it a lot less expensive mm. than buying 10 other water troughs. So that's the one thing that has been limiting us up till now, <coughs> is we haven't been able to take the water with the stock. We've yeah. had to let the stock run back to the water. Yeah. And that almost sort of defeats the point of having electric fences electric down fence, somewhere. Yeah. But that almost defeats the point of having all that because um, they're then walking back. The whole point is having electric fence and back fencing as it gets longer recovery yeah. time. Yeah. They're walking back for water, it's not getting that recovery time. Yeah. So this should you know, take us to a new level really. <coughs> but, we really? carry on. There is a point, I suppose we could, we could intensify the grazing even more uh, and move them more regularly, but, but with the sheep, I think it gets to a point where they don't naturally graze like that. Yeah. They like to spread out a bit more, so, um, we just give them quite a big area here, they can spread out. They'll have no longer than four days on SRV <coughs> off. There's um, not far off 60 acre block up here, and it was in two, it was in a half. So the sheep would come up and they just spread out and graze, yeah. and, and then they go to the other half. And then we put, you can see, stock fences over there. We then split it down into it's now into six blocks. Okay. Went to three at first and now six. Yeah. And then we've got the water system working up here with the solar pump and the pond. And then now with the electric fence, well, we can make as many yeah, yeah. subdivisions as we want with, that, with the water system we have as well. The idea of this as well, the deferred grazing was, number one, we'd improve the pasture and we'd then leave the 30 acres a more productive pasture. Yes. for turnout for lambs, single lambs. So hopefully they will finish a bit quicker as well. Brilliant. So the way we want to take this farm in the future is, is really driven by improving the soil health and improving what we're doing to the environment and the habitat because we fundamentally believe that by improving our habitat environment and improving our soil health, we will also improve our farm and improve our farm performance and profitability which is very important with you know, losing subsidy schemes and, and all the things that are changing on the farming in, in policies and, and external, external factors that we cannot control on the farm.